I don't like to say it, but guitar tone doesn't matter as much as we think it does. We need to talk about this and three other things that we as guitarists don't like to hear. But first off, let's just play a little. Here we go. guitar players often think the music world revolves around us, right? We want to take up the most space in a song, we want to have a fat guitar sound that just hits like a brick wall, we want to pose live and use the guitar sideways so everybody can see when we shred, and we often assume everybody feels the same way about that. Of course that doesn't apply to everybody, but I can say for myself, when I was in my early 20s, that was pretty much exactly how I thought. But my entire view rapidly changed after I went into songwriting and producing. Because once I wasn't just a guitar player anymore, once I needed to fit many instruments in one mix, and once I had to find the right balance between drums, bass, guitars, vocals, my entire view just changed. The more I wrote songs and produced them, the more I understood the guitar is actually just another cock in the machine. And the more I worked in songwriting and producing, the more I realized that there is a huge gap between what is considered right in the guitar world and what are the actual realities of writing, composing and producing music. So here are the four things that I've experienced guitar players don't really like hearing, but they're actually 100% true. The first thing is, the fatter, the better. We as guitarists, we all keep looking for the fattest possible tone, right? Because with a fat tone it means it's thick, it's massive, it's not too shrill, it's probably most appealing to a lot of people, right? And that is actually the first myth we absolutely have to bust today, and that is that fat tones when producing or recording music are actually helpful, because that's just not the case. Guitars essentially are a mid-range instrument. A lot of people know that. But I still see a lot of guitarists raising their eyebrows whenever some low end gets cut out of their sound. But cutting low end out of a guitar sound is actually 100% necessary, and all the low end that is being produced with the guitar cabinet is really not needed, neither live nor on the record. And hey, don't take my word for it, take Tom Bukovac's word for it. You can't roll enough low end out of guitar sounds, really. When I was a kid, I used to think that the more low end that a bass, that an amp head, you know, was, the better it was. With these old marshes, the first thing I do is turn the bass all the way to zero. All the way, I mean, all the way to zero. And like, mid-range is your only friend in the mix, you know, when you got a big band and you're playing with a bunch of guys, it's like guitar is all mid-range, Yeah. right? Bass doesn't mean shit on the guitar. That guy has played on over 2,000 records in his life. He must know. So let's remember, fatter is not better. Actually, the more mid-range, the better. Things that guitar players don't want to hear, number two. Fast soloing is actually almost never interesting to non-musicians. Or in other words, the only people you're probably going to attract with your music when you play fast solos all over the place are other guitarists. It's not useless. All I'm saying is a technical and fast solo will usually not make a song better. It will not make a song worse. It usually does very little to the perception of a song by, let's say, a bigger audience. If your goal is to have a band and write songs that appeal to a larger audience, you'd be better off spending time on writing a great chorus than writing a great solo. It's much easier to become a much better guitar player than you are today by focusing on other things 
than soloing fast. Focus on melodies, focus on writing, focus on chord systems, focus on modes, how to get into different moods with different chord changes, all that kind of stuff that really makes a listener pay attention. To be honest guys, for every paid job that I ever had, nobody ever requested me to do something fast. No one. So I'm not saying don't spend your time working on solos because you definitely can, it's cool, it's fun, but it's also very time consuming and you might be better off spending your time on writing, melodies, chord structures and all that cool stuff. Number three of things that guitar players don't want to hear, rhythm is actually everything. I know what you're thinking, Joey, geez, of course I can play rhythm, everybody with a little bit of experience can play in rhythm, right? But that's not what I mean. I mean using the guitar as a percussion instrument. I know guitars are stringed instruments per se, but in studios there is often a saying that a guitar is a percussion instrument as well. And what is meant by that is you can definitely use guitars to write riffs that are super super rhythmic. Now why is that important? That is because most people dance to rhythms, not guitar solos. That's why rhythm guitar is so much more important than lead guitar coming from a producing or songwriting perspective. Sometimes rhythm can even be more important than melody. Check out this example here. See that? That is a riff that consisted of one note, no melody. It's an F sharp and the octave of an F sharp, and it's bouncing octaves in a rhythm that makes 10,000 people jump. I think it's pretty safe to say that Bulls on Parade by Rage Against the Machine is one of the greatest rock songs of the 90s. Everybody loves that song. But why is it so cool? Why does everybody like it? It is because that rhythm, that da 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 it's a great way to incorporate rhythm in a very, very simple riff. And it's very, very effective, as you can see. And getting a sense for rhythm and what makes people actually move and like a song is so important in your development as a guitar player. Or take, for instance, Queens of the Stone Age. Probably one of the easiest riffs you could write, right? But that polka kind of rhythm just moves people. Rhythm is everything. And last but not least, now that every lead guitarist's heart is bleeding, let's talk about the thing that we started this video with. Point number four, your guitar tone doesn't matter as much as you think it does. Now I realize that is a little bit of a clickbait kind of statement, but it's actually true in most cases. When you look at a producer's perspective on guitar in a mix with a full band, a guitar really just fills this much space. And not only does it fill very little space in the mix, it also gets a lot of EQ. Like I said, a lot of lows are cut out to begin with. But that's not the only thing that mixing engineers and producers do to make guitar fit better in the mix. Usually you can see mid boosts, high mid boosts, high cuts, compressors, limiters, and all the other stuff that makes the guitar sound the way it sounds. But even before that, what happens massively alters your tone anyway. So let's just say for years and years, you have bought and sold gear, pedals, amps, cables, whatever, and now after years of searching for the right tone, you now found the tone that you really, really like. And then engineers put a microphone in front of it, and that already is a huge EQ, because no microphone is ever linear and will never recreate perfectly the sound that comes out of your cabinet. But it also goes through all the steps that I just described. EQ, a lot of cutting frequencies, we boost mids, we boost highs, we cut another frequency. And all of a sudden, your guitar just sounds massively different from what it sounded in your head and in your room when you were playing it. But that's just a music production reality. I want to take it one step further. Most non-musician listeners will not find the song good or bad 
depending on the guitar tone that is on that record. Now obviously there are exceptions to this. For instance, if some guitar player comes up with a completely new sound that has never been heard before, like Eddie Van Halen, of course that makes a huge difference because it defines an entire new genre of music. But let's just assume for a moment we're not the kind of innovator that Eddie Van Halen was. From a listener's perspective, it probably won't matter if you played a Marshall or an Orange on a record. It matters to you, and that's just fine. Obviously, guitar tone has a value, but that value, I feel like, within the guitar world is massively overstated. Because I feel like the only people who really care about that top end sizzle of a tube amp or that mid hum of a tube screamer are other guitar players. So the entire talk and search for tone is really just within the vacuum of the guitar world. Everybody outside of that, even singers or drummers, will not understand why we would put such an effort into this and why we're not taking the time instead to write better songs, better choruses, get a better sense for rhythm, and so on and so on. And that's pretty much the point of this video in general. I guess we as guitarists, we're often so locked in, in our own view of how we see music because we see it through the lens of like two humbucking pickups, right? <laughs> we're on the eternal hunt for either a better tone or a faster solo oftentimes, I think. And I guess sometimes it's just good to change the perspective see it from something else's view, and then maybe admit, hey, maybe this is not all that important to begin with. The Pretender by Foo Fighters would still be an absolute global world hit if the amp wasn't a high watt, but it was a Marshall. BB King's The Thrill Is Gone would still have been a hit no matter if you play through a Fender, a Marshall, or a Box. The mass success of Purple Rain by Prince is not remotely dependent on a certain guitar amp or pedal. Even guys like Joe Bonamassa, we've seen it in the past 10 years, can play through a Marshall Silver Jubilee, a Tweed, a Dumble Clone, a Plexi. It doesn't really matter. The sound is always great and people love it no matter what. Now, of course, does that mean the search for tone is pointless? Obviously not. If that's just a hobby or something you just want to do because it's that much fun, fine. I understand that. I'm a guitar player myself. I try pedals here and there, but I usually send them back because they all sound the same to me. If we use technique in soloing or gear as a means to become a better musician, that's probably going to be pretty disappointing once you're in the studio and the engineer takes out half of the frequencies that you were boosting with your $600 pedal. <laughs> So these were the four things that guitar players don't want to hear but are actually 100% true. I hope you liked the video, let me know what you think about it, and I'll see you in the next one.